Hello there. Today we're making a little numbers appear on the click when you click on the uh, clicker, kind of like how I'm showcasing here, how you the numbers go up and down. We're going to do that into our game today. So first thing you want to do is want to get rid of our current uh, clicker div. Um, we're going to be replacing it with the um, with one div. That way, make it a little more simpler on our lives. And since all the numbers are going to be inside this div, we need to have it all into one div instead of like multiple. Basically, you're going to set the ID to clicker, and then you're going to give it a class of unselectable so the player doesn't accidentally drag it, kind of like how we had before. And instead of having like an image inside the div, we're going to set the div to have a background image. So in order to do that, we need to go back to a CSS file, and we need to co comment out all the clicker container old code. And then you're going to type hashtag clicker, and we're going to target that element with that ID. So basically, we're going to be setting the background image to be of the salsa, or whatever your clicking item is. We're going to do background image. What you can do for background images, you can do URL, and then whatever the file path is to it. And in my case, the path would be images slash salsa dot png. Don't forget the dot and the slash beginning. That means you're starting in the main div, and then you're going to images. And now we want to set background size to contain, that way the image takes up the whole container. We're also going to set the height and width to about 256 pixels. One thing you do have to know is that you have to include the height and the width or else the element will not show up because there's nothing inside the element, therefore we have to define the height and the width ourselves. Then we're going to add a transition all 0.2 seconds, ease in and out, that way we can do the simple animations of what we had before with the hover and the active. And I've moved the height and the width down a little bit just to kind of do with that. And then as you can see as we go into the game, could see that it was displayed there which is what we want so we're going to do the hover effect um, it's just very simple and then we're going to do the active effect which is also very simple and as you can see above it is we can see transform scale 1.10 for hover and then it's transform scale 1 0 0.90 for the active we kind of want it to go shrink a little bit when we click on it um, so and as you can see, we're going to be uh, showcasing it. As you can see, it goes up and down kind of as we click it and hover it. So this is basically what we had before. It's just very different. Um, it's more simplistic, I should say. You can see we can goes up and down, we're getting more salsas, and it's basically the same thing as before. Now what we want to do is we want to start creating numbers whenever we click on it. So what you want to do is find your on click event, and then we're going to create a new function, function, create numbers on clicker or whatever you want to call it. I think I call it here create number on clicker in this tutorial or yeah create number on clicker and then you want to pass in an event thing. This is basically the mouse event so basically it's going to store where you clicked it, how you clicked it, etc etc. So what we need to do first is actually grab the element itself because we can't add numbers to it if we don't have the element. So we're going to do let clicker equal document get element by ID, which is clicker. And let just makes it so it is only, the variable is only valid in between the uh, brackets. And what else we're going to do is we're going to go into document.getElementById by BD, so the clicker .add event both clicker. So the on click event, we're just going to do create number on clicker, and then we're going to put event. But don't forget to put the event in the function. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create an element. So let element equal document dot create element, and it's going to be a div. So it's going to be in the parentheses, and we need to set the text content to whatever we want. In our case, we're going to do a plus of another game dot click value. Next, what we're going to do is we can do element.classList add number and unselectable so the player doesn't select it. We haven't created the number class in the CSS file yet. We'll do that here in a minute. And so basically, all we've done is added a text content and class event. And what we're going to do now is we're actually going to test this and to make sure that it is actually creating the things. So, but before we do that, we need to append the uh, element, the number, to the clicker. That way, it is actually displayed on the screen.
So what we do is if we click on it, you can see the ones are be created, but they're being created per row because of the fact that we haven't given it any styles so far. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the CSS file, then we're gonna make get the clicker and then the little greater than sign and then number or dot number, sorry. And what this basically says, hey, all the numbers inside the clicker, we're going to affect you. So we're going to set the Z index to 99, so that way it shows everything. The higher the Z index, the more it's going to show up in front of stuff. Um, we're going to set the font size 24 pixels, and we're going to set the color to black. And then we're going to set position to absolute. This is very important, as it makes it so we can position it anywhere in the thing as we want. And you need to have the position relative before because this makes it so the absolute values children inside of the relative are absolute to relative to the div. So instead of appearing in the top left corner, it's appearing in the top left corner of the salsa instead of the whole screen. So that's why you need a relative in the parent element. So you can see now it's being created in one spot. Now what we need to do is we need to get the current positions of where it was clicked. So and then we need to set that to the positions. So I just added some comments here. You don't have to do that if you don't want, but that's what I'm doing. So we're going to grab the positions from the mouse, which is actually sorted in the event, which is what we passed from earlier. So you can see down below our clicker or our on click has a function and then has the event there that is automatically passed. You really don't have to worry about it because it's it's automatic. So don't worry too much about that not being called. It will always be called with the event. And what we're going to do is we're going to create get the clicker offset which equals clicker dot getting let clicker offset equal clicker dot get bounding client rect and then we're going to let position equal an object with the x and then the y. Um, basically the clicker offset makes it I forget what it does exactly but it allows us to get the position according to the element because since the element uh, since the numbers are um, absolute position, which is relative to the clicker, you can't, because the clicker offset gets the uh, position of uh, where the mouse is on the page. So this, with this get bounding rec count rec, is going to get it so it's relative to the div. And basically you want the x, which is event.pageX minus clicker offset left, and then y, event.pageY minus clicker offset dot top. And what you're going to do next is you're going to set the element dot style left equal to event or position dot x plus uh, pixels. So this is going to set the position in the x axis, and then you're going to do style dot top equals position dot y plus px, and that's going to set the position according to the height. And so if we test it, the difference you're going to see is is as you see is it's being created right where the mouse is instead of in that top left corner which is what we want but now the next thing we want to do is we want the element to slowly rise to the top of the screen because right now it's just staying there it's kind of boring so we're slowly going to rise the element to the top of the screen So in order to do that, we're going to have to do a add a, a event or a document dot set interval. So what we're going to do is we're going to do let movement interval equal window dot set interval, and then function, and then I think we're going to set it to ten milliseconds. And then what we need to do is just increase the y position, or in this case, decrease it because it's going up. You're going to want to subtract it, and then it. It's not like in math where y position is kind of opposite. The higher the position, or like the lower the number, the higher position it is on the screen. That's just how it works. But, and then you need to set the element dot position dot y equal to the new position in our function, as you saw before. So element dot style top equals position dot y plus px. So you need to update the y position. Next, what we do is we want it to slowly fade out. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new function, function fade out. And we're going to take the element, the duration, how long you want it to fade out, the final opacity, what you want it to fade out at the end of it, and then the callback. The callback is basically the function that's going to be called once it is completely faded out to the final opacity. So we're going to set opacity equal to 1. 
and then let element fading interval equal to document dot set interval function and then I think we set this to 50 milliseconds yep I need to change that so basically what you want to do is opacity minus equal to 50 divided by the duration which is it basically makes it so the opacity opacity is being subtracted out of evenly or amount and 50 is to how long the interval is so that could be whatever you want the interval to be so if the opacity is less than the final opacity then we want to clear this interval and then we want to call back the function and that's basically it but we do need to update the opacity so this is element dot style dot opacity equals opacity so that is going to slowly fade out the element but we need to call the function so we'll add a new slowly fade out in our call so what you need to write down in the create number on clicker on the bottom is fade out and then you put the element duration we're going to do 3000 which is about three seconds 0 0.5 and then our function so our callback is we're going to delete or delete the element that way it isn't going off the screen infinitely so as you see if we refresh look at that it is being lifted off the screen but the problem is it's not being deleted so I forgot to add the element dot remove that way it's not going to the top of the screen forever and as you can see look at that it is now being that so as you can see the uh, elements are going up to the screen everything is being nice uh, but one problem is is the I believe the movement interval is still being called even though the element is deleted so we kind of don't want this to slow down our page so we're just going to do a very simple if type of element equals undefined you want to do this in the window dot set interval so if type of element equals undefined and element equals null so that means the element is deleted then we want to clear the interval movement interval not in the quotes like I did and as you can see nothing's really changed because you shouldn't see the change but one problem is when you see how I like click it all of them delete at once which is something you don't want basically as you saw before when it says opacity equals one you want to do let opacity equals one that's so each instance of the fade out has its own very own thing and that's basically it um, so that's how you make a clicker or number on the clicker which is very nice as you can see it all works does it like cookie clicker and then even if they increase their click value it will still update the numbers so you don't have to worry too much about that um, you can do some customization different customizations here I thought mm, maybe white would look better or you can also change the font family you can do a lot of stuff anything you could do in CSS you could do with these numbers as you can see um, it looks really really nice it's a little bit better and then I'm gonna change the font to white and then make it a, probably a little bit bigger so there are lots of customization features you could do you can set the font color font size you can do a lot of stuff here um, you can also change oh maybe I want it to fade completely out or I want it to fade a little bit longer you can do that all you have to do is go to the main JS file and probably go into the fade out now one thing we do need to do is probably add some variability so they're not being created in the same position so we're going to make a very basic function, function random number, min max, and it's going to return math.round, parenthesis, math.random, times max minus min plus min. You can find this code out on the internet. It's a very common random number generator. And then basically for your x or let your all let position, you want to add plus random number negative 5 to 5. And as you can see, we're going to refresh. You see, they're not all be created in the same spot. It's kind of a little bit of variability. A very su a subtle change, but I think it adds a lot to it. So this is probably my last tutorial. If you guys have any, want some more, just leave them down in the comments. And I really need ideas for new tutorials that you guys are interested in. So feel free to comment those down below. And 
yeah, so have a great day. I hope this tutorial helps because I didn't find a lot of information when I tried doing this on how to do this. And I thought it was a very big part of clicker games in my opinion. So it's very simple. It's not as hard as I thought it would be. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. Um, subscribe if you want to. And yeah, have a great day.